Welcome to Electron Line. For next challenge, we're going to find again the force the axle exerts on the wheel, but in this case, when the spoke is all the way at its lowest position. So how do we do that? Well, the same kind of principle applies. First of all, when the spoke is all the way at the bottom, the net torque at that moment in time is zero, which means that the angle acceleration is equal to zero. So we don't have to worry about that portion of it, but we do have to worry about the fact that the axle, uh, that the wheel is rotating so that the spoke is moving, and so we're going to experience a centripetal force. So let's identify all the forces on the wheel at this moment. So first of all, we have the weight of the wheel, that would be mg, and we have the weight of the spoke acting through the center mass, so that would be another mg, and we don't feel a centripetal force because of the wheel. The wheel has an equal mass distribution all the way around relative to the point of rotation, but the spoke does not. So therefore, the spoke is also going to experience a centripetal force, F sub C. We're going to call it the centrifugal force. And the centrifugal force, by definition, is equal to mv squared over r. We're going to call it a small r because it's the distance at the, for the center mass, of, so this would be your small r, which is equal to the radius of the spoke divided by 2. So we can say that this is equal to mv squared over r divided by 2, like this. And we also have to remember that the angular velocity at that moment from a previous video was equal to 2.71 radians per second. That's also going to come in handy. That's something we calculated earlier at the previous video. So, what do we do next? Well, we write down that the sum of all the forces in the y direction will be equal to zero. So that means we're going to have a force of the axle pushing, down on, pushing back on the wheel. So that would be F of the axle pushing back. So that's the force in the upper direction. So that's a positive, F of the axle, and minus the weight of the wheel, minus the weight of the spoke, and minus the centrifugal force, which means that the total force that the axle exerts on the wheel has to counterbalance all three forces, the weight of both objects plus the centrifugal force, which of course that fictitious force acts outward, and so we need to provide additional force by the axle. It means the force of the axle is equal to 2 times mg plus the centrifugal force, which is mv squared over r divided by 2. We already solved for that radius. But now we need to find the relationship between omega and v. So we can say that v is equal to the radius r times omega, but again in this case that would be r over 2, so v is equal to the full radius divided by 2 times omega, and so that's what goes in here. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the force of the axle is equal to 2mg plus m times v squared, which would be r over 2 quantity squared times omega squared divided by r over 2. And then you notice that this r over 2 cancels out with that r over 2. I think now we're ready to plug in all the numbers to see what we get. So that gives us force of the axle is equal to 2 times mg, mg is 10 newtons, that would be 20 newtons, plus, and let's see here, we have the mass, which is 1.02 kilograms, times the radius over 2, which is 1 meter divided by 2, that's a half a meter, and omega would be 2.71 radians per second, 2.71 radians per second squared, all right? Now, unit-wise, we know it's going to be newtons, but let's see if that works out. So the side, we have kilograms, one-half meters, and that would be radians per second squared. That would be one over second squared. And notice that meters per second squared is acceleration, kilogram is mass, 
mass and acceleration gives you newtons. Kilogram meters per second squared is indeed newtons, so the units come out. And so when we add that all together, notice we have 2.71 squared times 0.5 times 1.02, which is 3.75 added to 20. 23.75, that's 23.75 newtons, which is the force the axle exerts on the wheel and the spoke, when the spoke is all the way down. So instead of having a force that's less than 20 newtons when the spoke is over here, because the spoke is accelerating downward, here we have the effect of the centripetal force, adding additional force required for the axle to hold back both the weight and the centripetal motion of the spoke. And so therefore, that's how we find the total force that the axle exerts on the wheel and the spoke. And that is how it's done.